Hi guys, I am back with another video. This one is kind of like, I guess it's a frustrated chat about shopping for mother of the bride dresses. Um, kind of like a follow-up to the original um, video that I did about why Mother of the Bride dresses are so ugly. Um, with my daughter's wedding approaching in July, it's been suggested to me that I start looking for a dress now because it may take some time. So yesterday morning, with my husband in tow, we headed off to um, King of Prussia Mall to start the search for a dress for her wedding. Now, how can I put this? I am not crazy about a lot of the dresses that stores have to sell. And a couple of people did mention to me Go to Nordstrom. They really do have a good selection. You won't, you know, you won't be surprised. I know a lot of people that have found um, Mother of the Bride dresses at Nordstrom. So I figured, you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll give it a shot. So we arrived at the store just a little bit after it opened, maybe about 10:15. So we got out of the car and I went over to the special occasion dress area just to see what they had available. The pickings were slim, okay? Um, hold on, I did take some pictures on my cell phone to um, showcase in a blog post that I just wrote. So um, bear with me because I'm going to show you some of the dresses. Now, can you see this? This is horrible. And that's what Nordstrom had to offer in their um, special occasion area. Here's another one. I'm sorry, but this screams matronly, I have no style, and I don't care what I look like. Here's a couple of more. And I can't understand this. It's like, I just, I can't understand it. Why in the first place do manu dress manufacturers kind of insist that the mother of the bride or the groom for that fact is a woman who has totally given up on style, totally given up on how she looks, and just wants to be at the mercy of these dress companies that make horrible, horrible, shapeless, like the colors, the, the muted, disgusting colors. They're so unflattering. I mean, I, I don't, I can't wrap my head around this. So I found a saleswoman and I realized that my personality can be a little bit strong at times, but I'm not a mean person. So I found a saleswoman. And when I say saleswoman, I, they put women like my age in these departments, okay? So I approached the saleswoman and I said like half jokingly, excuse me, but do you have any Alfred Sung dresses or do you have any dresses for the mother of the bride that are on the like younger looking side or possibly nicer dresses than what you have here? And her reaction, like if she had darts in her eyes to throw at me, I would have been dead right now. She was so angry 
that I kind of insisted that the dresses in the department were really ugly. And her answer was, no, we don't have Alfred Sung. And no, we don't have any other dresses. Now, in the meantime, another customer was standing a couple of feet away from me. And when the saleswoman turned around, the other woman who was standing next to me turned around and started laughing. And she said, honey, you're never going to find anything here. I'm in the same boat as you. And she started laughing a lot because she thought that what I was saying was both funny and true. Now, here's the thing that really bothered me. This has nothing, it, like her wanting to throw darts at me, notwithstanding. I mean, that's fine. But Nordstrom also has a wedding suite. On their website, they have Alfred Sung dresses, okay? She never even recommended to me or even suggested that I might want to try the wedding suite or make an appointment there. Now, that to me is the sign of a sales associate who doesn't give two hoo-hahs about what a customer wants. Now, when I say this, I am not saying that all sales associates are like this because trust me, they aren't. I used to work at Nordstrom and Nordstrom has some of the greatest, most helpful sales associates like ever. But there's also that small percentage of sales associates that, and I'm going to stereotype here, okay? I am going to stereotype. They're sharks. And the shark sales associate is usually about my age, like maybe even a little younger, I'd say anywhere from 50s up to 70s, okay? Now, this is not all this is just a percentage. They're the women that are there purely for sales and commission. They're there to make money. And obviously, who's not at a job to make money, okay? But their commission is more important to them than customer service. And I know this because Nordy's works on, um, the sales associates work on commission there. These women are there purely to push inventory. They do not care who they push inventory on. Um, the more vulnerable you are, the more indecisive you are, the more their teeth come out and the more that they can kind of like get a feeler for that customer that they know they can sell anything to. The customer that they don't like is the customer who basically has a good idea of what they want and nothing is going to sway them. So the shark doesn't like women who know their, their style. The shark doesn't like women who know their body type. The shark doesn't like a woman who will walk away with nothing. Okay. That's what the shark is like. So ladies, if you are indecisive, if you do not know what you want, if you're going to be wishy-washy in any sense of the word, please do yourself a favor and run away from the shark because you will be going home with a dress or with a handbag or with shoes that as soon as you get home, you will regret that purchase. And usually the vulnerable woman is so nice that she's not going to bring the item back for returning. Trust me. Um, it's daunting to me because there was a time that I loved going into Nordstrom. Um, 
I don't know what it is. I think that their change up has been when they started selling like J. And I love J. Crew. Trust me, this has not. If I'm going to buy J. Crew, I'm going into J. Crew. I'm not going to Nordstrom to buy J. Crew. But they've also got. Um, they're selling specialty store items like Madewell, Lily Pulitzer, um, J. Crew, Top Shot, Top Shop. So. If I'm going to, if, if I want a Lily Pulitzer dress, I'm going to Lily Pulitzer or I'm going online. Um, if I want J. Crew, you can best sure I'm going into the J. Crew store or I'm going online. Same with Madewell. Um, I'm not going to Nordstrom for that. And as much as Nordstrom has been known for great customer service, I will say 90% of their sales associates do follow. Uh, follow that to a T. They're very, 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 very helpful and very nice. But as far as like specialized dresses go, I'm sorry. Ladies, if you are indecisive, you are better off going with a personal shopper than to put your taste in the hands of any of these shark ladies. So at this point, I was really upset because I didn't even want to go into the wedding into the wedding suite and make an appointment because I was just so disgusted at the curt remark that the sales associate gave me and she didn't even bother recommend or suggest that I go to the wedding suite so right away I was kind of getting upset and copying an attitude and I was on the verge of tears because this is my daughter's day. This is not my day. I need a dress that's going to look appropriate. But I also need a dress that's not going to stand out and take away from her day. And by that, how can I put this? I mean, I want to blend. And let me tell you something. People remember to things when they go to weddings. They remember how gorgeous the bride looked. And they also remember how the mother of the bride or the mother of the groom looked. And they're not going to say too much if the dress was appropriate and nice. But if that dress was horrible and absolutely disgusting and frumpy, girlfriends that went to that wedding are going to be talking about that for years to come. Like, Oh, do you remember so-and-so's wedding? Do you remember the dress that his slash her mother had on? What was she thinking? Oh my God, that dress was so awful. Trust me, people are going to be saying that. People notice the bad before they notice the good. So yeah, in a way, if you have a really horrible dress for your child's wedding, people are going to remember that. So anyway, as we were going through the mall, I figured let's go to either Bloomingdale's or Lord & Taylor. And since Lord & Taylor was kind of next on the feng shui line, we decided to stop in there. And at this point, I was filled with trepidation because I wasn't too hopeful that I was ever going to find something. So we went into the huge, huge dress department. Now, understand this. It's been a while since I've been to Lord & Taylor. I haven't been there. I haven't been in that store in a couple of years. When I lived in New Jersey, I used to go to Lord & Taylor all the time. Um, when I moved to the Philly area, like I've been to Lord & Taylor by shoes, but that's that's it. I really haven't bought any clothing there. So when I got off the escalator and saw this uh, like miraculous dress department, uh, like cocktail dresses, special occasion dresses, bridesmaids dresses, mother of the bride dresses, formal dresses, party dresses, dresses for uh, dresses for work, I was blown over because I felt like I just stepped into a gold mine. It was it was great. So 
my husband found this chair, which they do have nice seating there for um, the men who accompany you so they can just sit down and read a book or something. So I started looking around and I found, I found quite a few articles. I found quite a few dresses. I found some really nice short dresses because, you know, I'm hell bent on finding a short dress. Um, I also just for ha ha's picked out two long dresses simply because my daughter was hinting that a long dress might be better. I being the stubborn mother that I am was like, no, but that's neither here nor there. The dresses were just like the dresses were I'm speechless at the selection of dresses. So anyway, I went up to the register where there were four, possibly five mature saleswomen of my demographic. One was, one was ringing up a customer. And the others were just all chat, you know, all chatty chat, chatty chat, chatty chat, chatty chat. Again, I went up and I said, excuse me, but do you have any short bridesmaids, dress, uh, um, mother of the bride dresses? I'm looking for a mother of the bride dress that's a little bit more modern than what I've seen. Do you have any or do you have any Alfred Sum? Obviously, you know that I'm hung up on this Alfred Sung guy. So the reaction, albeit not as bad as the reaction that I received at Nordstrom, was along the same lines. Again, one of the women answered and she said, no, we don't have what you're looking for. And then she turned around, ignored me, and went on her merry way to speak to the other sales associates who were around my age. Okay? This is important. So now I'm wondering, okay, are my eyes too crossed today? Um, is it my clothes? Because... Even though I did go prepared, and let me show you how prepared I went. See this tote bag? It holds a lot. In this tote bag, I had two wigs, a pair of shoes, because when I'm trying on dresses, I want appropriate shoes. And I also had a pair of shapewear to put on while I was trying the dresses on. Okay? I come. I come prepared. I mean, I even took two boxes of extra hair just so I could play around in the dressing room with the appropriate hair to the appropriate dress, okay? I wore a white button-down collar shirt because it's easier to take off and on when you have fake hair. I wore jeans and I wore Converse low-top sneakers because I do like to be comfortable when I'm on a mission. And when I have serious shopping to do, I definitely want to be very comfortable. And since I didn't want to have a heavy coat on, I wore a J. Crew schoolboy blazer in navy, no less. So I didn't think I looked that bad, but you would think that I had the plague the way that these women just turned around and ignored me. What this can do to a woman's ego is just horrible. Hmm. And to think the day before was International Women's Day. We're our own worst enemies now, aren't we? Anyway, I took a whole bunch of dresses into the dressing room by myself. I lugged them all in. And I went in and out and in and out and in and out trying on dresses. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you. Here's one of the dresses that I tried on.
it was agreed that it wasn't dressy enough for a wedding. Here's another one. It was too big, but I really loved it. Um, I loved this dress, but it's more of a party dress, not um, for a mother of the bride dress. Here's one of the long dresses that I tried on. And I loved it. So we're getting close to what I'm looking for. Um, I did realize that maybe I'm not going to find that perfect short dress. I did go online and I ordered an Alfred Sung little black dress that I will be wearing to the rehearsal dinner. Um, the jury is still out on the mother of the bride dress, but there was another long dress that I tried on that was absolutely stunning. It was a Calvin Klein. I mean, this dress was gorgeous. And when I left the dressing room, I took dresses that I wasn't interested at all in and I put them back in their proper place because yeah, I might be a pain in the ass, but I'm that customer that will take the time to put clothes back on the hanger and then put them back in their proper place. So when I was going back into the dressing room, one of the women that was at that desk, came up to me and said, oh, that dress is stunning on you. You should buy, oh, that dress, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that, oh, you need to buy that dress. And I just looked at her and I said, yeah, this is a great dress, isn't it? No thanks to you and no thanks to any of the women that work here because you refused to help me. So I found this dress on my own. And if I did decide to buy it, I wouldn't pay for it in this department. I would give somebody else the commission. And then I went back into the um, dressing room. Now, my husband overheard me and he thought that I was a bit, I'm gonna use the word catty instead of another word. He thought that maybe I overreacted a bit by being snide to that woman, but I don't think that I did. Um, customer service is important and nobody wants to be ignored. And that's what it comes down to. Nobody wants to be ignored. And yeah, you ignored me when I needed help. But yet what, once I found something that could have been a possible purchase, you then came up to me to tell me how great it was and that I must buy it. No, I must not buy it. I will buy it if I want to, but it's not a must for me. And if I am going to buy it, I will end up going to somebody else rather than the people who ignored me. So I don't think I'm being that bad. But to make a long story short, um, I did make a purchase. I am not going to let you know what that purchase was simply because I still have more shopping to do and I like an element of surprise and the wedding's not till July. But regardless, I did make a purchase. Um, it was a nice dress. And it's a party dress. So when I did find a cashier to pay for the dress, the woman who was very, very nice said, oh, you know, you can pay for this um, in the department that you got it in. And I told her, no, I can't because there are five women that are working in that department. Not one of them, not one of them helped me. And I tried on dresses for a long time. I took many dresses in there. I was out on the floor um, 
showing my husband how the dresses looked and still nobody decided to help me. And trust me, that department wasn't very crowded. Well, this woman at the cashier, she was really, really nice. She was so upset about what happened that she called the manager of the store over. And long story short, or long story shorter, I was able to air my grievances to him. But on the other hand, as much as I aired my grievances, I also told him that the store has a great, great selection and that I was really like I was totally surprised at how wonderful the selection was. Um, he was very happy and pleased to hear that. And he also told me that they are expanding on their dress department. So that made me thrilled. I was just like, oh my God, I have to come back here again before the wedding for my search. So I will say maybe the search is over. Maybe the search isn't over. Maybe I found a dress. Maybe I didn't find a dress. Um, Looks like I found a dress for a party, possibly for the rehearsal dinner. So we'll see. We will, we shall see what we shall see. But that was my That was basically my grievance. Look, I worked in retail. I know that there are customers that are less, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I know that there are customers that can be difficult, but I don't, how can I put this? Sometimes a customer that may seem difficult at first can end up to be a really good customer. When I worked at Nordstrom in the handbag department, I my strategy for selling bags was if somebody was indecisive, I would show them a couple of bags. And then I would say to them, look, don't buy something because you think you need to buy something. Don't buy something that you're not madly in love with. If you see a bag that you think you're going to be madly in love with, let me know and I'll put it on hold, do some more shopping, go look at some more bags in another store. And if you are positive that this is the bag that you want, come back to me. I'll be here. I'll get the bag for you and you'll have fun. Because my thing is, I didn't want returns. Because when you have a return, that goes against your commission. So why would I want to sell something to somebody that they're not 100% in love with? That's the thing. And you know, sometimes you shouldn't judge people by the way that they look. Yeah, I'm no mainline doyen or dilettante, but I'm a customer and I came into your store and you should respect the people that come into your store. If you respect me, I'll respect you. That's that's what it comes down. That's what it comes down to. So I have gone on too long. I am going to go and I bid you farewell and have a great week. And I will be back next weekend. Bye.